They got it. Okay, really quick, in a, as briefly as you can, what is agency and don't say freedom to act? Okay, what is agency? Oh, come on. Representation. Who do you represent? You're an agent for whom? And then you look at the fiduciary duties, loyalty, obedience, full disclosure, confidentiality, reasonable care, and anything else the division of real estate says you have to do. So that said, this comes up quite often. What is the policy in this brokerage about dual agency? It's, it's mostly a hard no. What's the difference between dual agency and limited agency as your broker defines the world? Go ahead. Limited would be two agents, same broker. So the broker's limited. And then dual? Yes. So dual agency would be one agent is representing both the buyer and the seller. Do you see the potential challenges if you're representing both sides of the transaction? I, I let me share one. I don't believe the agent. I this was an agent we had happened to be a newer agent decided to tackle commercial. All on his own. It was awesome. Um, buyer didn't deposit earnest money, and so the seller went to cancel. And the buyer said, "No, no, I really want this commercial property. I'll put down two hundred thousand dollars of earnest money." The seller said sold, buyer never deposited. If the seller sues the buyer and wins, what, would, what do you think the buyer might do? You think the buyer might sue? If the seller sued and lost, who do you think, what do you think the seller might do? Do you see why that dual agency thing can be? Now, that's the, I think I call it an extreme, but I promise you, even when I've done it, I've had somewhere... I took a 4% listing so that it would help the buyer and the seller come together on a deal. I had a buyer that said, dang, you should sure took care of your seller. I had a seller saying, you sure had the buyer's back. And it's like, I did everything perfectly right. And, and I know that that's your intent and that's how we desire to do. So if you will, avoid dual agency at all costs. If you have a situation where we need to talk, let's have a conversation. Sometimes it comes up, but what's the simple solution? You have a listing, you have a buyer that falls in love with your listing. Yeah, go with the unrepresented buyer. I would put a clause in the buyer broker agreement if you need to, and just say, hey, if you fall in love with one of my listings buyer on that specific house, you'll be unrepresented. Now, you know that I'm going to take care of you. I'm, I'm going to do the right thing. It's just that I have to pick a side. And so this is what I'm, you know, my broker's instructing me to do that. If the buyer really, really wants to be represented, offer an agent a couple hundred bucks to write an offer and be their agent on that one deal. And so you, again, that's just a simple um, addendum to your buyer broker and handle it. Represent your sellers. Listings still are the name of the game and all that. Any questions about that? I know agency is so dang exciting. I just knew you guys, I, I could feel the energy in here. All right. Very last thing. Just want to let you know, we've updated the independent contractor agreement. There's always little tweaks we make on them. So I wanted to make you aware of them. I'm going to tell you about the big tweak. There's one big tweak in the ICA. No, you want to tell me what it is? Do you remember? Well, go ahead and what, which ones, what, I'm trying to think what they are now. <laughs> what one do you have? We're going to give you, when you close a transaction, it's closed and done, funded and recorded. You have three months to get your paperwork done. If your paperwork's not done in three, in three months, I just got a bonus. You have 90 days. We have deals that literally we're sitting on over a year. And we still have and we still have commission sitting in my operating account, and we're done. And so, yeah. I just want you to know that's in your operating. It's it's in your ICA. So that's just one you'll say, huh? That's different. Yeah, it's different. Dean, also, I, I, why I, is that a liability to the brokerage? I can have an agent come back. To, I, remember when, when you guys went to real estate? I just remember this was pressed into my brain all the time. If you have a problem getting paid, what do you have to do? Sue your broker, 
right? That that was all the time. Sue your broker, sue your broker. Well, I hate having a hammer hanging over my head. So an agent leaves and they come back two years later, you never paid me. I think we had one deal, Alan, was it 10 years? Is that almost, I think it was like 10 years old. We finally just said, we're just going to pay him. We just did it because we don't want it sitting on our account. But for those of you on Zoom, if if we get audited on a particular file and we don't have paperwork, the brokerage gets fined, the agent gets fined. And that is not fine. It's not good. Okay. So, yeah, but it's a paperwork thing. Is three is three months enough time? I'm not giving. I'm not going to change. I'm just curious. You know, most agents are like, "Here's the check." If Talina was our accounting person, they put the check there and they go, "I'll wait." That's most agents. So, may I just make a recommendation? Three months, I think, is more than sufficient time to get your dang paperwork done. Okay, so that was the one. For a small percentage, fifty. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. All right. Nobody, what else did you have in there that was coming up? Oh, yeah. You know, we, we've already talked about that. That just went up to, to $35 a transaction side and all that. Anyway, I hope that's enough. But dang it, when agency, this time we're really serious about it. Be loyal. Um, we have several teams in here, several duos, husbands and wives. If you're representing opposite sides of the transaction, we have partners in here as well, you know, where there's two, two men, two women, men and men and a man and a woman. Bottom line is, I always tease and say, no pillow talk. When it comes to your transaction, represent and keep those confidentialities. Don't say, hey, these, these buyers are crazy. You know, they might be. The sellers <laughs> may be too. Just saying. So anyway, make sure you maintain that. That confidentiality is a big piece of it. And that's really why you cannot represent both sides fairly because you cannot be fully confidential. If the buyer says I paid twice, double, or the seller says I take half and you're being fully a full fiduciary, you'd have to tell them in a dual agency situation. That's why you can't. So anyway, the DOJ is going to be all over it. I promise it's coming. And so I'm just trying to be ahead of that curve. Anyway, that's all I got. Okay, thanks, Dean. I think if it's been more than three months, we'll just divide it up to everybody who comes to team meeting. That's what we should do. All right. Let's do that. Help me finish this really quick. If you do what you've done, you'll get what you've always gotten. Same results, right? I want to talk about um, for the next 20 ish minutes is a strategy that you can implement into your business in the next six, 12 months. To uh, we've been talking about this to really bulletproof your business. Who is filling the shift today that we were talking about six months ago? Okay. And, and what I'll share is that um, we're probably going to be in this uh, storm. Have you heard the term that winter is here? Right, it's not winter is coming. Winter is here, and it, it might be a winter of uh, months, eighteen months, and so you've got to prepare for that. One strategy that I want to share with you that um, can be a game changer is building a referral system into your business. Okay, so we're going to talk about what that looks like and how that can be uh, a benefit. But I, I actually want to start back to where this started for me. So in 2013 was my here going out and knocking doors, I did uh, summer sales. And I was dropped off in Dallas, Texas with 24 other uh, young individuals who were all excited to make great money to go back to school and pay, pay for school, right? That was the, the pitch that got us in the doors that you can work for four months, cover your, your college tuition and be good to go. And within three weeks, guess how many people were still left? There were three of us. and. Um, I actually stuck that summer out purely based off of pride because my manager, when I left, uh, I was working at a call center. He said, you'll be back. Nobody makes it in door to door. So I was like, even if I have to eat chips for the rest of the summer and uh, you know, just scrape by, I'm going to stick it out. So a lot of it was out of pride, but I'm so grateful that I did stick it out. 
because my, my business, my life blew up um, after that. And uh, what I want to share with you is that first summer, I, an average summer, 70 clients, I started with security. An average summer is somewhere between 70 to 100 units is pretty healthy. Um, and so that summer I'd sold 70, 73 customers. Uh, the next year I had sold 173 transitioned into a different space. And every year from there on, I was between 400 to 500 clients per year, per summer, uh, which was four to five times the average individual was doing. And there was one tweak that I added into my business. You want to guess what that is? Referral. Is building a referral system into my business. And uh, when I finished uh, eight years later, it was easier when I was selling those 500 units, so doing it in less time than other people would take to sell 100 units. And I built that exact same system into my real estate business when I got started here uh, two and a half years ago. And so I'm going to give you exactly what I do, my step-by-step -step process. What I want to share is that it's not complete, it's not perfect, may not be your style. Just pick and choose the things that do uh, really stand out to you today to add to your business. But I also want to have this be a conversation. So if any of you have already built uh, some way of, of generating referrals consistently um, and predictably in your business, please share that. Um, and let's just have an open conversation. Does that sound good? Cool. So um, these are the things that I want to start with. First, why build a referral system in your business? Greg. Your chances of closing referral are very high compared to a maybe a cold lead. Why is that, Courtney? When someone refu someone who likes you and who knows you and trusts you passes your name off to somebody else, then it's kind of like a I don't know, it's like a it's like a what's the word? Sure, all those things. <laughs> but but yeah, I just think that that when when you get the lead that's a referral, then they already have some kind of confidence and trust in you because their friend recommended you. What Courtney's talking about is this uh, principle of transfer of trust. Okay. You can use this to your advantage. And the reality is that building a relationship time, right? And you can actually shortcut that process by having the relationship you built with somebody else do a lot of the heavy lifting where you're transferring the trust from one of your customers, one of your clients, one of your relationships and partial to the next or new person. Does that make sense? So you're actually starting 10 steps ahead in the game. Does that make sense? So huge piece. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and that's a lot of why it take it, why the conversion rate that Greg mentioned is so much higher. It's because you're starting from a completely different foundation. Okay. Why else would you want a referral system in your business? Jordan. I'd say that's just the definition of working smarter, not harder. And hmm. so because as over time, as you build up that trust with different people and they're, they're doing your work for you, it's, it's using leverage in a way with your clients to bring people your way. So I, like if any of us had a referral today that said, hey, somebody's, I have a friend that's ready to sell. I need you to go meet with them tonight. Like all of us would be excited to go do that. And so if we can build a system that kind of provides more of those opportunities, then that's just less time we have to work into it to, to get to that point where we're doing a lot more. Love it. So you're sharing time. It's a leverage piece, right? I think it's interesting too, your experience with referrals that you receive, do you feel like that is typically the 18 month out business or more of the now business when you get a referral? No. Yeah. Like usually it's pretty close to being ready to roll, right? So that's another shortcut is the, the timeline at which you're working that lead, right? Or that customer. 
And so understanding that that's also a part of this working smarter versus harder piece. Let's get one more. Why else? Greg. Referrals lead to referrals. You've got an exponential effect in your business when you do it that way, right? And that's uh, two of these principles that I'm going to share with you. Um, but the question I want to start with actually is, what is your referral system? Okay, I want you to think about this. One, please raise your hand if you do have an actual step-by-step -step referral system that you've clarified. Come on, don't be shy. None? Okay. One, what I'll tell you is you're missing out on so much opportunity if you do not have that defined in the next two weeks. Because the market that we're heading into is going to rely on different strategies. Remember the saying, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten, right? So 25 units uh, last year for me were referrals. 100% of my business this year has either been a repeat or a referral. So I promise what I'm going to share with you works. You have to work it. And I'm going to give you my system, but I want you to go through and make it your own. Tweak it as needed. Okay. Um, now, in marketing and in sales, and just know we're changing the kind of strategies of team meeting moving forward. Hopefully, you've recognized this um, from last week to this week. Uh, we're going to get very tactical and talk about strategies. We're going to work on skill sets because that's what market we're headed into is a skill set, a skill based market. Okay. Um, little side note we do have uh, an exciting team meeting on the 29th, so the Tuesday after coming back from, um, from uh, Thanksgiving. And we've got uh, one of the lead uh, representatives for Tony Robbins' team actually going to be with us for team meeting that day to talk about some of the mindset and skill set of sales that are going to be required to navigate 2023. So that's going to be super impactful. Uh, you want to make sure that's on your calendar. But um, we're going to just get into tactics for the next couple of months because I think it's such an important piece. So, but when it comes to sales and marketing, what is the rule of seven? Anybody know? Josh, do you have your, no? What? Seven no's to yes. That's actually one of them. That's a different one, which is seven no's to get to a yes. The other one though, is that people to, in order for a consumer to buy a product or an idea, they have to hear it seven different times, typically in seven different ways. Have you guys heard that before? So this is psychology or sales 101. If I tell you what, what are the top two or three brand uh, chip brands out there, which ones come to mind? Fritos, Lay's, Doritos, Pringles, okay. Why don't you think of my wife eats this like off brand that's like supposed to be super healthy and it's, yes, that one, right? I shouldn't say off-brand. It is it's a it's a nice brand, but it's like one you wouldn't think of, right? Just interesting. But how often have you seen a Doritos commercial? How often do you see those in the Super Bowl? Right. So it's interesting. Is follow some of the greats. You think about Apple. Uh, you think about um, all these different individuals. What they really focus on is their marketing, their messaging on a consistent basis. What I'll share with you is the rule to a referral. It has to be the same way. You actually have to ask for referrals seven different ways. You have to ask consistently, right? And so that's where I'm gonna share with you is if you just call them and say, hey, do you have anybody who's looking to buy, sell, or invest seven different times throughout the year? Guess what's gonna happen? Probably gonna block you, <laughs> right? So you have to get a little bit creative how you ask. And that's what we're gonna talk about in some of those seeds that you can plant in different ways. Um, this is an interesting idea too. When I was at uh, Mega Camp last, back in August, I think it was, they, somebody said this on stage and it hit home with me because it was an aha where it's like, oh, that's actually what I've been doing 
they just put a kind of a label to it. Does anybody, does it, I shared this in one team meeting, this, this idea. Does anybody know how to finish this sentence? Something blank and something blank. Yeah. Yeah. Are you simply fulfilling a function or are you delivering an experience? That is what's going to be the golden key to unlocking more referrals in your business. Most consumers see real estate agents in what lens. They see us more of a functionary. Right, even though we have this fiduciary responsibility, they don't even know what that means, right? Or care, really. They care about the experience they, they receive, but most of them only receive a functionary experience from agents. Does that make sense? How else would you guys say that, what I just said? Or how else do you see this in business? Carl said in bold yesterday that the NAR statistics show that, what was it, 75% or some number like that of people viewed their experience with their agent as average. 70%? Mm. Yeah, agents are average. Special as you think, oftentimes, right? Or the other side to look at that is how do you put yourself in the 30% category? So that's what we're going to dive into. Let's dive into what experience looks like that you can deliver to your, your clients that gives them the wow factor that will lead to referrals. Okay. So first, I'm getting, these are text messages uh, from different clients throughout the past year where they've been connecting me with the now business. So, um, and it's really nice when a client will write a novel for you on the right-hand side and go into to far uh, a ton of depth. But what you'll find is these, what I'm gonna share with you, these all came after I deployed the referral system. So these are responses from the experience that they received throughout working with me, okay? And so I'm gonna show you what some of those precursors are, but one of the things that I want, want, to, under, want to help you understand is that this text is so much, uh, makes the day so much more fun to wake up to in real estate, then I've got to go make how many phone calls in, for those who are in bold right now? 20 phone calls a day, right? So pick your poison, choose how you want to work your business. I would suggest you add this to whatever you're currently doing, okay? Um, well, I'm gonna have Hunter pull up a sheet and this is what we'll send out to you. So everybody will have access to this. Um, this is a draft that I put together because this is all kind of in my mind or in different places up to this point. So I put it together kind of in a simple format and, um, and actually it's big enough. Hunter, you can leave, leave it. Thank you. Um, you can leave it at like the 100 mark so I can see a little bit more. Thank you. Um, so go through this, make a copy. Please don't edit the actual document and add your plan here. Okay. If you want to steal it word for word, great. No problem. But it all starts during your consultation with a client. Okay. That is where you actually have to plant the initial seed that you're going to continue to ask them for referrals over time. And that should be the first time that you're actually asking for referrals. So it starts with a powerful, what I call a powerful preframe. And for context, additional context, when is the best time to ask for referrals? It's any time that your client is in a, an emotionally high state, a positive energetic state. So really quick, before I get into the details of this, at what moments throughout the purchase process or sales process is a high value moment? Under contract? Offer accepted? Signed agreement? Closing.
maybe like negotiating repairs timeline. Any others? Yeah, I'd add that on the negotiate. Yep. Any others? Move in day. Any more? Birthday or anniversary? Anniversary. Closing gift time. So I'm going to just highlight uh, those those last two because um, funny enough, we put the after the close is kind of like secondary. What I'll share with you is that their experience they receive after you close the deal is the most important. Why is that? When do most agents stop? At closing is their finish line, right? We, we've talked about this, but this is the cycle of somebody's real estate transactions. As soon as they buy, their most likelihood of buying another home is almost zero, right? Unless they're an investor. And when are they most likely to buy again? Somewhere between that seven to, oops, seven to 10 years, right? Now, what most agents do is saying, well, I'm going to just time it and I'm going to follow up with them back somewhere around here, right? Unfortunately. Now, guess what? We are, people are smart, right? People are intelligent. So your clients, even though they can't label this, they don't know these stats, they fill it. Would you agree with that? So what happens when you're going to consistently reach out to them at important timelines throughout the year beyond the sell, or maybe even two years in. There's actually one, man, I forgot to put up on here. I'm going to just read it. This was uh, last week. I had a client who closed two years ago. So this is his second year home anniversary. And he bought a uh, rental property in Saratoga. It was just, I sent, uh, he just sent me a picture. Um, and it, he sent me a picture with a note because it's from Amazon. So it, it's just a, a typed out note. And the note said, hey, happy to, to your home anniversary on your Saratoga unit. I hope it's added a ton of value to your wealth building goals uh, from Shoney Ivins. And he sent me a text and he says, much love, brother. Thank you. Yes, Saratoga has been a huge asset for us. Rent is now 2,600 per month. I know crazy things have happened in the last couple of years. And we're cash flow $1,300 per month. Appreciation has been well over 100,000. We're so grateful. Courtney. This kind of made me think of um, what we've done before. And so every, on the first year anniversary, I send crumble to cookies to my clients. And I'll, I'll say that in this, this referral aspect of it, every time I do that, they post on social media, they blast it out. We have the coolest realtor ever kind of thing. And so then it just adds more, you know, building up your credibility and also showing that it doesn't end with totally. the closing. Absolutely. Um, just what Courtney just said, and I'm sure you're going to dive into this, but it's really important that you teach your clients how to give you referrals yes. and that you set the framework that, Hey, I am going to be reaching out to you for the next seven years, like, at a, like on a consistent basis. Cause if you set that expectation, then they're, they're not going to feel this. Hey, he's just, you know, reaching out to me to see my, my real estate business. Totally. And, and then also, uh, we, we've talked about on our team about that, that promise script. I, I can't remember who, who wrote it, but basically like right when you're getting the agreement signed, you say, Hey, Mr. Seller, Mr. Buyer, I am so excited to do all these services for you. And by the way, and then you, you set it up and there's a whole conversation, but if I get to the closing table and you have not referred me business, I'm going to assume that I didn't do all of the things that I said I would. And you lay that groundwork that that's what you're expecting out mm, of the transaction. Yeah, totally. Has anybody used that promise script in their business? 
Lee Stern does, right? She kills it. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is a form of that because um, in in door to door, uh, just a little bit of the layout of the land, you're knocking on somebody's door, complete stranger, and then within 15 minutes, you got to convince them to give you their credit card and their social security number. Okay. So part of it is understanding uh, the psychology of sales or influence. And so part of this that I'm going to share with you is just the conversations to have with clients that makes it really easy for them to give you referrals down the road. Okay. So it starts with, uh, and I'm going to just go through this script. So powerful preframe. Hey, James or Hunter, I want to leave you with a promise and two questions. Okay. So this is a little bit different uh, the way I structure it. I promise that you're going to love, and I name whatever their hot button is. I going deep on finding out process. And what I'm going to do is consistently remind them that I heard them. Like why do people, like let's talk about the real reasons why people move. Relocation, they have to work. Divorce. Dividends, right? Those are all the have tos, most part. What about the want tos? Dream home. Dream home. Three car garage. Pacific neighborhood. School district. Like there's a lot of want tos, right? And oftentimes the people who have to also have a want to in that whole com uh, uh, equation. So great people, great real estate agents will find the why, like what is important to this person? So in this script, it's so-and-so, I wanna leave you with a promise and two questions. I promise that you're going to love whatever their outcome was that was important to them. And as a result of asking, or and again, this is just highlighting, as a result of asking and listening, you should know exactly what it is the client wants and needs uh, from an agent, okay, what they're expecting. So the question I have for you is this. This is what gave me the green light. Okay, this is the important part. I want to know what success looks like to you, S Susie. So meaning during the home purchase or home selling process, whatever their unique situation is, how would you determine that I was the best agent you could have selected to sell your home? Awesome. Now I'm going to repeat that. That's great. So just to make sure that we're on the same page, what's really important for your, your family can make some memories on an amazing property. Is that right? Awesome. So you're just reiterating. What is that showing that I'm doing with Susie? Listening, Listening right? And here's the important part. Thank you. Is perfect. Susie, I can do that. I'm your person. That's the thing you're going to do no matter what, whatever it is that they said. Okay. That's the one thing. And then ask for permission. So Susie, can I ask uh, for your help with the goal that's important to me? Okay. This is where it gets different. I'm going to tell you, this is a different approach. Adapt it as you like. What I've found is that sharing my goal has the biggest impact in that moment. I'm gonna help you with your goal. So naturally people wanna reciprocate, right? So what would you like to do? Help me with my goal, right? So Susie, um, I wanna ask for your help with a goal that's important to me. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm getting their confirmation up front. Is that okay? Yes. I want to and insert your big goal, whatever that is. I want to feed 10,000 kids and I'm gonna show a picture of whatever that goal is that I'm heading for that year. I wanna take my family on vacation so we can build more memories while my kids are young. I want to pay for my kids college so they don't have to worry about working and studying at the same time. I want them to be completely dialed in on their, their expertise. Or I want to support this charity that because X, Y, Z, show a picture. Why do you think this is such an important part? In the process. Why do most people think real estate agents are in the business? Make money. So what are you planting the seed of? 
yeah, 100%. That you're doing something that's actually impactful, that's meaningful. And what you're going to find is that they're going to act being in your goal too. Because they're invested in their goals, right? So naturally, just think humans are reciprocal in nature, meaning when you get something, what do you want to do? You want to give back, right? That's the whole part of this process is setting up what is their goal that you're going to help them accomplish and then asking them to help you with your goal. Is that clear? Any questions? Okay, so we're going to cruise on to the next part. Um, oh, and this, oh, the last part to end it. So it's, and the way I'm going to do that, so whatever the goal is, the way I'm going to do that is by supporting X amount of families this year, whatever your, your number's goal is, uh, with their real estate needs. And I'm X amount of families away from achieving that goal. And so my ask is this, is that during your home sales or home purchase process, it's going to happen, Adam, throughout this process, is naturally when you're talking with friends or family members, people are going to just tell you that they have some sort of real estate need too. Like when you're sharing with your friends that you're going to be moving, you might come across one, two, three other people that are also going to be making a move in the next six to 12 months. Does that make sense? So all I ask, Adam, is that you connect me when that happens. Is that fair? Okay, so very simple, just tee up, help plant. This is the important part, is to plant the seed of what's going to happen six to 12 months. Because naturally they can have a conversation in Winco with a friend they run into. I haven't seen you in four years, what's new? And what does their friend share? Stuff that's happening in their life and they're gonna say, what's new with you? And they're gonna say, well, we just bought a new home. We're getting ready to move or we're selling our house. And that friend might say, oh, we're actually thinking about moving too. Now, if you have not planted the seed, they may not always think about, think about you, okay? So this is telling their subconscious mind to look for those opportunities when they arise. You're planting the seed that it's going to happen. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's cruise down. So planting the seed, again, your RAS, your reticular activating system is a real thing. It's basically a, a seeking missile. So when you program that RAS, when you plant the seed, their mind is going to look for those kind of opportunities moving forward. So you have to be very intentional up front for referrals on the back end. Uh, so again, that's the kind of the script that I just went through with Adam. So you're gonna have this conversation with friends, family members, coworkers, or even potential strangers about exciting process of selling your home. Uh, brainstorm immediately. So has this type of conversation happened already? Sometimes somebody else probably had that conversation with them, right? So you can find out if they already have referrals in mind. Give positive feedback. Them commit to the introduction through text or email. So I teach them how to give me referrals. So, hey, I'm gonna actually send you a text message. It's just a template. It makes it really easy for you to put me in a group thread uh, with somebody crossed over the next three to six months. Does that sound good? So I'm giving them that text up front. It's just a copy and paste. I send it over to them. And many of those text messages that you saw before, they just kind of crafted it themselves. They, they took the template, but then adjusted it slightly. What's number eight? What's most important? Follow through. You've got to deliver. You've got to deliver. You've got to deliver. So don't fulfill a function, deliver on, on it on an experience. Here's the reality. Meeting people's expectation is nothing sexy. Okay. If you're meeting somebody's expectation, that's where you're lumped in that 70% of like it was average. Meeting expectations is what's average. So um, the other part is go the distance. So sign up for the marathon, not a 100 yard dash. A 100 yard dash is when you say, my closing date is on the 12th. I might give them a closing gift at the end, but after that, lights out, right? Look at this as how can you deliver value over the next seven years to these individuals, okay? Again, this is the, the part we mentioned. Studies have shown that people must see a message at least seven times before it sinks in. So that is the first time they're really hearing about referrals. Now let's get into the ongoing sides is you want to actually look at through all of these different pieces here, how can you ask for referrals? Okay. 
uh, on that sheet that I shared, and just for time, I'm going to have you go and look at it on your own, is I actually put all of, uh, all of our emails that I send out to clients, we ask for referrals in different ways every time. So when they're uh, under contract, this is the end of the email is what it's saying. So once they're under contract, I give them a lot of you know, uh, details on the, the next three to four weeks, right? What's going to happen in the process. But this last paragraph is the most important. It says, lastly, if you're happy with the care I've provided so far with the sale of your home or the purchase of your new home, I ask that you keep me in mind if you meet someone who needs a real estate professional. I'd love to help them buy, sell, or invest and can help anywhere nationwide. All the best. Super simple. Home anniversary. Once they hit the one month mark on being home, I send them another email. Congratulations. You just hit the one month mark. If anyone in your network needs real estate advice about buying, selling, and investing, I'm always happy to help. We work almost exclusively on referrals, so we always ask our great clients if they know anyone. No need to respond. We're just a huge fan on referrals. So if anyone comes up, I'd love the opportunity to take, uh, of taking care of them. No need to respond is an important part of that. It's like, it's just a ping, but I don't need to say anything to it, right? Um, I'm looking forward to catching up soon. All the best. I do follow that up with a phone call. So like within two to three days after that, I'll give them a phone call, just check in, see how things are going. So I, I put all that in here so you can go through and read all these. There are different ways of saying, please send me referrals. So again, it's the consistency over time. That's the, the key. But here's the big home run that I'm going to finish with is you want to deliver an experience to clients. Okay. One um, thing you do that through is being very intentional about your client gifts. When I first started my first couple of transactions, I would just do a closing gift like at the closing table. And then I started thinking back to my door-to-door -door experience and it was the over time that was actually more important than the one time like big gift. And so what I started doing was saying, well, how can I give a gift every single quarter to somebody? Um, and then also knowing this rule, what does the 80-20 rule mean? 80-20 principle. Hundred percent. Eighty percent of your referrals or eighty percent of your visits can come from twenty percent of your awesome clients, if you're very purposeful. So the two ways that I do this is I look for two strategies. One is that is just the normal everyday client that I'm going to support. They're going to get consistency from me, and I will get a five times return by spreading out that client gift over the next 12 months, rather than just giving them a, a client gift at closing. This is my philosophy. You don't have to adopt it. If you want to go with the one-time gift, totally fine. But what I found is I will get a five times return on their ROI of happiness if they get a, a gift every quarter rather than them just getting one gift one, one time. Does that make sense? The other idea though, is that the thoughtfulness of gift, so how um, personalized or customized that gift is, gives you a 10x return. The reality is you can't do that for everybody, right? Because of time. So what I do is I pick my top clients and I will get very purposeful about the gifts that I give them. Um, let me see what some of these are. So this, this client, uh, one example is, this is a good friend of mine from the door-to-door -door space. On his birthday, I got him an aura ring, okay? Now that's not an, is anybody, is everybody familiar with an aura ring first? Okay. So the aura ring tracks everything to do with sleep and helping you to improve your, your overall energy, health, sleep uh, cycles. And um, it's a unique gift. Now I know how much uh, health and fitness matters to this individual. So I got him an aura ring. Uh, this specific client that I have the video for, um, he's an investor in San Francisco. He bought four homes with me last year. So the clients who either repeat buyers or repeat referrals are going to get a way better experience from me throughout the year because I know 80% of the results are going to come from those clients. Does that make sense? Um, so him specifically, I'll play this video to end, end out the day. It's very quick. And then we'll, we'll jump into lunch. Hey, Joni. Thank you very much for the gift card. As you can see, we are thoroughly enjoying it up here. We took the lift up to the... Uh, top of the mountain, had an amazing lunch. This, this is breathtaking. I 
have never seen mountains like this before and I can't wait to come back in the winter and ski it. So thank you for the gift and uh, exposing me to this magic land. Say thank you, Ava. Thank you. Say thanks, Shoni. So um, they came here from San Francisco for the first time. He brought his family out and this is after he bought three or four homes with me. And so instead of, again, just having a clothing gift, I had a Sundance uh, gift card uh, for them and, and a gift basket as well uh, for them to go up to, to Sundance and have an experience together. People will always remember what you say, but they will remember what? How you make them feel, right? What is more meaningful than somebody having an experience, an intimate experience with their family, right? And so for him specifically, uh, I just know how much his family mattered to him, how much he actually enjoys the outdoors. And if they haven't been to Utah yet, why not to a cool place up in Sundance and have them be able to experience it firsthand? And so get very purposeful around your top five to seven clients that you know will make a big difference in your business over the next year and invest in them, invest into those relationships. The last thing I'll share with you is this, uh, this idea that what you appreciate, appreciates. What you appreciate, appreciates. So the purpose of this whole system is if you show clients that you appreciate them, that you really care more than the money, you care about them throughout the year, I promise referrals are gonna come super easy, okay? The heavy lifting is done up front. Um, and the last piece is this, you have to make deposits before you attempt to make withdrawals. Most agents will ask for referrals without making deposits. The transaction itself is not a deposit. Expect you to do that. They expect you to get to the finish line. Does that make sense? What they don't expect is you to go beyond that in delivering a really magical experience for them. For them. So if you change that, that's when you're going to be able to make withdrawals down the road with referrals or repeat business. Okay. So let's go ahead and just uh, two or three ahas, and then we'll wrap up. Hunter. Um, so obviously, I think we're all going to want to implement this moving forward. What would you recommend to kind of go back and uh, implement this to past clients? Yeah, great question, actually. If you go to the next slide. So the, the consistency is for all clients. The thoughtfulness is for your top clients. Does that make sense? So if you'll go to the next slide, um, this is actually how I do that. There's a service called Client Giant where it's $10 per month per client and they will get a gift every single quarter. So text messages that you actually saw where people are saying, hey, uh, thank you so much for the gift. You guys are awesome. Thank you again for, oh, let's see. Uh, thank you for the DoorDash gift card. Thank you guys for the cute travel pouch. All of those were just on Client Giant where I set it and forget it. So what Client Giant does is I upload all my closing in here and they will send a client gift every single quarter. So if you look in the top or bottom right corner, it shows examples of gifts that they've sent. Um, the travel pouch was the nice little toiletry bag that clients got and some packing cubes. Uh, but that is for $10 a month, they will get a, a gift every single quarter on auto, autopilot. I don't have to do anything else. The nice, real, really cool message and put from Shoney is if it was sent directly from me. So those clients care more about the thoughtfulness of the re repetitive gift receiving than they do about what the gift actually is. So that's where for the scale, you've got to use something that's automatic. And that system helps with it, is Client Giant. Does that answer your question? Cool. Thanks, Hunter. Any other ahas from today? Becca and then Mason. Totally. Yep. Education without implementation is what? Entertainment. Entertainment. Mason and then, then Josh. Uh, the give and take was a, was a takeaway. Like mm. just setting the expectation with them that you're going to meet their expectation and exceed it. And then that you also have a need and that they can help you meet your expectation or your need. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Best. 
Yep. So I uh, we use something like Client Giant. It's called uh, Mailbox Power. Or it used to be Banner Season, um, but it the the concept that I think that I've been missing is emphasizing specific dates. Like it's been a year since you bought your first home, and we're so grateful. Again, like yeah. we've been having very generic items go out to every single client, but I think that's been my biggest aha is like making each each send off something specific. So. Totally. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And that's where uh, you can get very like, individualized. The, all of my investors, typically they get the MREI uh, year one or year two. So you can get specific based off the client as well. With this, just one of my, my admin just does. Sure. Then they'll. Yeah. Number wise here, what do you have? Like a thousand people in the database and how many of them are raising their hand? I all a thousand. Well, I don't so I here's where I don't want to go against models of MREA, okay, by any means. I actively probably only worked the last three years, a hundred and fifty clients. But it's because I'm very intentional about the referral side. So 25 of the 36 units last year were referrals. So, but I don't want us to get away from models. If you have to have a healthy R uh, uh, database that you work consistently, but I'm working about 150 people in my database. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, we're going to turn the time over to Meth Mob and Anne. So grateful for providing lunch, our lunch sponsor for today. Uh, if anybody has any follow-up questions, please shoot me an email. We'll send this whole guide out uh, later today so you have access to it. But if you have specific questions, reach out. But Ann, take it away. Awesome. Thank you. We've Thank got a mic right welcome. here. I'll make it really quick because you guys are probably starving. And, and we've got some Olive Garden back there for you. But a couple things. So my name is Ann Atkin. I own Meth Mob Decontamination Specialist. My daughter, Nicole, back here, she's the controller. She's been with us about four years. And so if you're calling the office, you're going to get one of us um, that, that can help you navigate through the ugly when meth does come up in your transaction. A um, couple things that are that are new since I was here last. We actually have an office right here in the building now, which I'm pretty excited about. And my house is really excited about. Um, so if it gets too dicey, we might be above here. Tell me if we need to be quiet because sometimes, well, we talk a lot up there, but but we're really excited to be here. Um, we've also got a new promotion um, that we're, we're running with Jared through the end of the year with Pillar to Post. So I'm sure a lot of you are using uh, Pillar to Post. And if you're not, you should give them the opportunity. But we're actually partnering with him through the end of the year when you refer um, a meth test to be done with your home inspection, your meth test is going to be free at no charge. Um, so that that will, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm in hopes of avoiding this call that we get every week in meth mob and we literally get it every week and, and sometimes they're the dual agency. So when you brought up dual agency, I'm like, that that's one of the times where it comes up. But but if you're in real estate for the long haul and and I know we, we just talked about the seven years. Meth does not off gas and go away in seven years. In fact, the half-life of meth is over a hundred years. So if your client doesn't get a meth test today when they're buying and they call you up in five years or four years or seven years, because you've given that, that them that exceptional experience and they went, wow, that was awesome buying. Let's, let's do a sell and a buy and you've got them back. If they didn't test for meth, now and the new buyer test for meth it'll still be there and and unfortunately at least one of our customers every week no lie no exaggeration and there are no exceptions every week this happens somebody's bought their problem because they don't know to test for meth and and it's really easy here in in utah county where i live and love to go we don't have meth here and certainly if we did it wouldn't be in this beautiful house it would only be in the boulders area right and and by far, I am in nicer houses than what you might think about what a meth house looks like. So, so it, it is a real protection to your clients 
to have you recommend that they do a meth test because in their mind, there's no need to do a meth test on this really nice house. And then they won't be calling us in five years going, crap, I wish I would have tested because I do get that all the time. So please send your home inspections to, to Jared, pillar to post. And, and uh, if you just call him up and let him know, hey, this is, this is only with Keller Williams Westfield, just so you know. You guys are the only ones that have this deal with him. So um, anyway, that's all I've got. I will answer whatever questions. I'll also be back there so you guys can go eat too. You want to go eat and then just come hit Nicole or I back up there with questions or have you got, yeah, go eat, go eat. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thanks.